the the theme is healing cancer without medicine and this is part six and he's uh, he's called it multi-purpose physical exercise i'm intrigued because um i think we could all do with a bit more exercise but how do we do exercise as he says bouncing up and down on his trampoline have you got an affiliate have you got an aff do you have an affiliate agreement for this trampoline do you sell them you know no, no. is it a harold newborg trampoline uh, very very nice you see guys what is happening here uh, uh that's what it's called oh okay that's well, a, that's right and the steve uh, right it's a yeah. it's a trampoline that's right and uh what I do is really structured movement because uh, I was going to talk to, uh, we're going to talk about this today. Okay, it's well, I, I better not say anything too exciting or too controversial because you'll bounce up through the roof. <laughs> but still, I try, I don't. <laughs> oh my goodness, oh my goodness. But this is great. And uh, well, go ahead. I mean, uh, tell me, tell me all about the importance of exercise and how it fits in with, uh, with uh, cancer healing. You see, um, there was a guy called Pavlov, a Russian. Uh, with the dog? The, with the dogs, the one with the dogs, Pavlov's dogs, that's right. Yeah. He said that um, he was not the first one. It was a lot of both, both, both Greek guys and Roman uh, guys from the history that, uh, and, and Chinese for a thousand years ago and okay. from India. They used to say that the body is a self-conditioning machine. Kind of that's Pavlov's word, word, words about machine. But he said that the body is a self-conditioning machine. Give the body the right conditions yeah. to heal itself, and it will do. Wow! Do. Wow! Uh, that's a uh, very um, you know that's a very very interesting thought because it is. Uh, yeah, and uh, I really believe in it. What's what I'm doing uh, in my daily uh, for for my day job. And I see very good results with it. And I really love what I'm doing. I And I try really to live this um, in my life. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. So how, I mean, you say it's self-conditioning. So, so clearly because we're, we're prone in our modern society to get these, uh, these lifestyle, these metabolic diseases, such as cancer, such as diabetes, heart, heart and uh, circulation problems. So clearly we are not giving our bodies the right conditions or the right circumstances to, um, to, to self-condition. Is that right? That's totally right. And you know, uh, basically, it's um that's um it's about the physical the the mental stress have always physical effects the mental oh. stress okay oh. yeah and physical movement has also another way mental effects so what's happening this interconnection is very interesting to look uh, further into that's what we're actually doing today okay so i will uh, we will talk uh, we're talking about today it's structured movement Okay. Yeah. And structured movement, the movement that actually uh, connects to other areas of healing. And these areas of healing is uh, how do we, how we uh, take the energy from the environment through the, uh, through the meal, through, through, through the treatment, through food, yeah. through breathing, and it is affected very much by the movement. Wow. So I didn't know that. Degree, the degree, the optimization of energy yeah. into from the environment is very much affected by the movement. And the other thing is affected by the movement very much. It's how we optimize the energy distribution uh, in, the in the environment. Uh, I'm sorry, in the body. In the body. Yeah. And that's what we're talking about. Uh, um, that's uh, uh, we have mental energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have uh, immunity. It's also an energy. And physical. Is it immunity is an energy? Three things physical, mental, and immune. They are interconnected and interdependent. And today we are talking, um, not strictly, but we, today we have an angle towards physical movement and physical exercise. So you see, okay. um, many of us, uh, we, we overdo things. Do we? Okay. <laughs> when, we, when we have some tasks, we want to recover from the illness. We want to get bigger muscles. 
we want yeah, sure i want to you know i want to be yes yes, yes. We want, important for my macho image that's right we want to reach some uh distinct physical results yeah um, and with our training we tend to overdo things and that's harm our immunity that's harm our, our mental resilience yeah that's harm actually our physical resilience too and that it harms uh, the ability to digest food yeah okay and it depends it, it affects very much our breathing and through okay. breathing it affects our ability to uh, 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 to uh, avoid stress okay so we're saying that these things have to be in balance you can't have an extreme in in one direction is that is that what you're saying that's what we're talking about that's okay. right so the physical movement is a cornerstone is a cornerstone of uh, um you know well-being okay so so, so, um, so please uh, uh, please continue I'm, I'm intrigued i'm sure everyone else is intrigued how so how see, we optimize uh, this how we optimize this uh, because we're talking right now about this series um are about stress uh, are about cancer i'm sorry yeah so i will short uh, in short uh, uh, tell about uh, how the movement affect healing of cancer and self-healing in general and then i will talk about different ways of training and the right training as i okay. say as well, go I ahead I'm, I'm sure everyone's really really interested to hear this it's fantastic yeah. you know um for when um when we're talking about cancer one of the uh, very crucial things about cancer is uh, to establish the flow in our body mm -hmm. you see and the cancer very much is um, when we see uh, when we have this alternative view on the human healing and the human physiology it's called alternative because we don't use medicine uh, i i work drug free and um, i'm not a doctor so what i do i um, i i um, uh, giving people some different tools how to exercise and then uh, I help them uh, every day by following them, by ask, uh, by answering the questions. So we have actually, um, with cancer people that have cancer and other diseases, we, we establish a team where we work together every day. And the That's true. It's real holistic. So you combine okay. holisticism and engineering, in fact. That's right. That's right. And we work with these five different areas that I. Yeah, know, the, the I pentagram. Talk. Yes. The pentagram. Yes. The Sakharov pentagram. <laughs> so, um, so what is very crucial to remember about cancer, that yeah. the cancer starts, the population of cancer cells start to proliferate and uh, actually um, st start being stronger than the, the uh, immunity level we have right. in, okay. the, That's... in the state where the flow is impaired. And you see, uh, our body is... Uh, um has 13 different systems 13 physiologically yes. and all of them are tubular or in some way are um interconnected and interdependent with other tubular systems you mean there's a there's a sort of a a, a network of vessels that that's right vessels okay. and, uh, so there's some fluid that goes through fluid. yes all the 13 systems mm -hmm. and um what is interesting uh, to remember because it's um, it's flu, flu uh, it's a uh, it's tubular yeah then we can talk about flow okay yeah, yeah. yeah i see the connection now yeah the connection and when the flow stops and uh, very often it stops because of it's normally it stops because of some kind of stress is uh, preventing the flow and um, some kind of a stop stopping um, system stopping the flow develops slowly you know it can be yeah. a re residue it can be a residue uh on the uh for example on the walls of uh, of your gut it can be <laughs> it can be a residue on the walls of your um vessels a blood, blood vessels, yeah. can be some kind of uh, a residue preventing the flow of your lymph and many different other things and um and that's caused 
by stress mainly you say that these yeah. these block it or these these restrictions i would say these restrictions in the vessels the restrictions are, are caused the by stress the restrictions in the flow i see and that's why if we it um uh, we have to um we have to uh, remember uh that it's not enough to work with breathing exercises no okay no. it's not enough to work with the optimi optimization of digestion or optimizing your nutrition mm -hmm. it's not enough making mental exercises it's not enough uh, thinking about just about immunity in some uh, very strict terms no in order to make a real breakthrough you have to move that's our dna that's how we, move. we have to move everything in our dna is is directly connected to the movement wow. so when we stop the movement when we have a sedentary lifestyle you know when we uh, stare at the computer the most of the day and then come at home and our couch our functioning couch potatoes, our couch potatoes. Uh, and we are teaching our children by our example to do this then absolutely we yeah. don't have a good prospects neither in our own life nor in our children's life okay so that's what i want to really really um be you know uh, to uh, inspire people that's the best thing to do the the hard thing is to make people do the exercise and that's why the life change is what we really need the life change to allow us to move okay well, Misha, i'm sure that everyone everyone watching will say well yeah it's you know it's pretty obvious that you need exercise and everything but oh, you know we've got stressful days we, we we have to work and we have to sit in an office or sit in a car we have to sit you know two hours in the car every day going to work coming home from work and and basically when we come home we're just too tired and the only thing we want to do is just sit down and relax and and everything so i think i think no one would disagree that exercise is important but um, how can we how can we change our, uh, our, our mental mindset to to make it an integral part of our our existence? Uh, that's right. The you see the mental part and the understanding of physiology. That's the first thing. That's the cornerstone. And then we can change the lifestyle because we have to know why. You know the why is the most important question. Okay. Then we can answer uh, how. Yeah. And then we can say what. Yeah, that's right. It's, uh, it's um, so how? let's talk. Anna about from Anna from Holland. Yeah, she's uh, she's uh, I know her through Periscope, uh, one of my followers. So uh, she's right. It's making better choices in your life. You have to put yourself first. But you know, people don't put themselves first. This is the, this is the uh, 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 paradox of our life. We all want to live longer and live better lives. But we we somehow don't put ourselves first. It's a strange that's, thing, isn't that's, it? That's actually a very good point because um, we have to. It's like you know entering the <clears throat> well um, the um, how do you call it uh, ascenseur in French uh, the, um, the the lift. No, uh, like, uh, how do you call it in in English? <laughs> <laughs> or, or in the in the um, when you take the security bre the breathing mask. In the plane you have to oh i see the oxygen masks yeah yeah i know yeah yeah, yeah. um so uh, you have to put yourself first and then to spread the vibe to spread the inspiration and to show people in your own family in your own uh, vicinity in your own near um um uh, environment environment yeah what, what i will tell you now let's talk about why so why, why? the structured movement is a, is a good thing because you see because we tend to overdo things but very often uh, we um, we harm more than we do good wow okay that's yeah, scary so bad. because you see for example when people do physical exercise they yeah. are very much thinking about um, how they look that's very much uh, one of the biggest drivers when we do yeah. physical exercise, we think about the looks. 
And yeah. the looks has to be bigger and better and nicer and, and everything. And the well, we want to be attractive to other people. We want to be the loved. Focus, the focus moves from the 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 movement itself. Yeah. To the effect of the movement. You see. Okay. That's about why. That's about understanding why do you do this thing, and what happens is um, when we move the um, the focus, we move the focus actually from the body. We move the focus to the thinking, and to the understanding, and to the some um, um, some feelings. The feelings that you have, maybe uh, you would like to you would like to look nicer. You would like uh, to have the appearance. That's like, that's a feeling, you know. And then you're thinking, um, oh, I'm not good enough, and that's so. You don't have a focus on the movement, and you know what happens when you don't have the focus on the movement? No, you harm your body, and that's really? what happens when the the you know the um, the whole internet is filled with the forums where yoga practitioners are talking about the way they harmed the, the instructors they harmed their body and themselves they harmed the body because they moved the focus from the body itself from the movement itself to some posture to some external things not internal you say you see the when the focus move outside of the, your physical body then you harm yourself the same thing happened very much when we shift focus uh, during uh, the uh, different kind of sport sports activities, for example, running, for example, any kind of sport, uh, athletic games. When we uh, when we start thinking, that's where the harm. That's what uh, that's where the uh, the fibers get damaged. Um, you see, that's uh, where we get hurt. Mm -hmm. That's uh, and that's not f when we're moving from the senses. So what I'm really saying is, for example, if you are running, yeah, let's take concrete things. If you are running, you're mm -hmm. very much thinking about uh, um, how fast you're running, how yeah. many kilometers you're running, yeah, and how good you're going to perform. Yeah. Now that's thinking. That's the domain of your head. I see. Yeah. So Makes when sense. you are moving. And you have your focus on the domain of your thoughts mm -hmm. and feeling of maybe not being good enough, not doing. That's the wrong thing to do. Your focus has to remain in the body. And what we see is that that uh, the first thing it harms, that's breathing patterns. This kind of movement that is not structured because of uh, mm, uh, people normally are not, uh, don't know this, uh, these things. You know, there's a lack of knowledge. Uh, they harm themselves because what we do, what they do, they hyperventilate. That's the first thing that happens. That's right. So, so, they're, so they're running with their mouth open. and they're, <laughs> yeah, they're running with the mouth open and uh, their breathing organ gets slowly um, actually trained, uh, uh, retrained, retrained on not better optimization, but worse optimization very often of the, of the cell oxygenation. So it means uh, the, uh, <clears throat> how you transport oxygen and how you um, leverage oxygen to the cell. It, yep. This process getting harmed, not optimized, but harmed. When you move the focus from your body, from your breathing to the result. So you actually move from process-oriented way of working to the res result-oriented and the target-oriented. And that's hurting your body. Yeah, that's what what it does. So what I say is, instead, if we do structured movement, we have to uh, learn and remain focused on the body. We have to learn different physical aspects of movement, like for example, eyesight. Where yeah. where do you look? Where is your sight uh, is um, pointed at when you? Well, when you, when you're running, you're looking down at the ground. Yeah. Is that wrong? Very, very much. Both the breathing and every single system in your body. Uh, because of what? Because the angle of your head, the angle of your head while you're running, affects very much 
the tension of all the muscles that lie beneath the ne uh, neck muscles. Because you see, the head is the biggest, biggest single concentration of weight in our body. Okay, yeah, that's and true. It, and it's placed uh, in a way, it's placed high up. So actually, uh, a very little uh, change of the angle yeah. has a very, very big effect on the tension of the muscles and the muscle pairs that we call that we call uh, antagonist muscles and protagonists, yeah, okay. antagonist muscles. And these yes. antagonist muscles, you know, one pair is working, the yeah. other one has to be relaxed. Relaxing. Yeah, correct. And then the other is not relaxed, so we actually uh, it it the contra it, it it make a counterpart to the movement that we need right now in this millisecond. And what we do? We are losing the energy. Every single step, we are using too much energy on the movement. And what we have, we have to remember from this book, you, you know, you if you, you remember the guy, Ray, Ray Baumeister, he wrote the book about willpower. It's called Willpower. Willpower. Uh, what he's actually basically, th uh, it's a book with 300 uh, 300 pages as audiobook uh, audiobook is two volumes yeah. um, I remember it's 20 hours or 25 hours of listening I have it as audiobook I have oh, my books uh, about physiology as audiobook because when I'm driving um, I'm very often just listen to the books and yeah. what he's saying this his main thought willpower Ray Baumeister that's right um, very interesting book but the the idea is that you know all kinds of energy that we need it's physical energy immune energy and uh and um what kind of energy immune energy physical energy and um, mental energy um we we get this energy from uh, Oh, just a second we get this energy um welcome sorry, back steve. sorry sorry welcome back steve thank Steve's you yeah. I, I, I managed I to mean, kick myself out i still heard you but i managed to kick myself happens, out it happens steve not a problem not a problem at all so what i say is um uh, ray baumeister willpower his uh, uh main idea is that all three kinds of energy, and we have physical energy, we have mental energy, and immunity. Mm -hmm. It's coming from the same pool of energy. Do I have a pool here? Well, I have a very nice pool here. I'll show you. <laughs> this is a very nice one. Look at this. This is a gift from my girlfriend. That's beautiful. She was playing concerts in Morocco, on the festival in Morocco. Isn't it nice? That's beautiful, isn't it? Can we call it the pool of energy? The, we will call it the pool of energy. No, I would pour something, but uh, there's nothing. Oh, there's not much, you haven't got much energy, no Misha. No much tea here. But, um, okay, so that's a pool of energy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you should have some props for that. That's, that's pretty good. Happens. You see what happens? Um, what happens is when we go down with the mental side, yeah. It the physical. So physical stress affects the um, has a physical effects. Physio, you know, um, psychological stress has physical effects. Okay. The immune stress has mental effects. Mental stress has physical. So all these things, I can see that they're all working against each other. So what he's saying is that our uh, resilience, both physical and mental, are um, how do we perform the um, the amount? How do how do we peak performance is going down for the athletes when they are impaired in some way in the mental side or in the uh, or in the immunity. Yeah. So everything, and we have only hundred uh, percent. That's what he's talking too about. We have only hundred percent of energy. Every single day, it's different. Hmm. In kilojoules, in kilocalories, uh, it's different every day. You know, I work with um, with measuring with every one of my uh, clients. I'm measuring 
BMI times PAL. And BMI and PAL, it shows us the amount of energy, required energy. Uh, PAL, that's the uh, physical activity level. And it's measured from 1.4 to 2.4. And it's, uh, we, have, we have to measure it carefully because when you do caloric restriction for cancer clients, I do it in 75% of, of body energy requirement in the day. And it has, this body energy requirement has to be measured very, very precisely. And we use the, um, and the BMI, um, that's the, uh, that actually shows, let me tell you uh, precisely what it is. <clears throat> um, uh, the, uh, the, no, no, not the BMI, I'm so, uh, it's called, um, it's called BM, <clears throat> BMR. Okay, that's and different from BMI. Yeah. BMR, it's a, a basic uh, or a metabolic rate. Basic metabolic, metabolic rate. It's about yes. 1500 kilocalories a day for most people. Well, more or um, less. Yeah. You see, um, th uh, you see what's happening is uh, uh, a body energy requirement for many of my clients are about 3000 kilocalories. So I take 75% of that. Okay. And it depends on the physical exercise, you see. And uh, then when we take 75% or 60% sometimes, but 75 is good when you have cancer, for example. Yeah. Then you, um, then you have all the good effects for, from fasting every day. So we do intermittent fasting. And for cancer and for all kinds of other kinds of diseases, it's actually kickstart the ability of, on the, of the cells to rejuvenate. To actually get rid of uh, a different kind uh, of garbage. Well, there's a quick question. I don't know if you want to take that now. Or should we keep the question? Uh, but it's a simple answer, I think. Um, does it get easier as you age? Does it get easier to keep yourself balanced as you age? That's a very good question. Tell Fatty, thank you very much. That's a very, very good question. And you see, what I think, because we are answer, answer right now answering the question why? Why? Yes, it's gonna be easier with the age. <laughs> Is it? Because we get wiser, you see. Because we get wiser. Do, we, do I? Okay. I, don't, I think we get wiser. I see it in my children already. <laughs> <laughs> they get wiser. You know, when they are twenty-three, they are wiser than they've been at twenty or eighteen or like that. You see. Yeah totally different they're human beings their way of thinking is different so me at 50 you know um, i'm uh, I, I certainly feel uh, feel wiser and more confident than in 40 because i had many more problems i had to battle with being battle every day with now i don't have this problem because i just understood that uh, simply those things are not valuable anymore so what i do i strip myself of things i strip myself of um, a different kind of thoughts, and that's uh, you know uh, easing your easing your bar burden, and that's a uh, hard work to keep yourself balanced, positive and centered. That's right. I'm curious curious if it gets any easier with your age. Yes, it gets easier. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I would yes. agree that I would agree that it's not much more much more easy because for one for one thing, I, I tell you this this is this is something that's very true. As you get older, I mean, I'm 61, nearly 62. You actually realize that your, your life is finite. When you're 20 or something, you think you're immortal and you think you can do all sorts of things to abuse your body. You think, well, it's okay. I've got another 78 years to live. When you get 61, you think, okay, uh, according to the, uh, to the, to the um, numbers, I've got about 16, 17 years to go. So I've got to make each day count. Yeah. It changes your mindset dramatically the mindset and you know the more you train this and you train it with the age because all of us we age we don't never stop yeah. my father is, uh, is uh, just uh, become 83 yeah and um and that's the, the area that is really um a kind of uh, it's closed you cannot really talk about this kind of things with your family and with your friends about the age because it's a taboo right yeah, 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 absolutely. But you know, it's very hard to break a taboo. Every time I, um, I go to Russia, I travel to Russia. I write down what I have to remember my father to break the taboos. And it's still when I come to Russia and I'm sitting there and I remember. Oh, now I have to remember these questions. And I 
get this. I remember this. I don't have to write them. I remember all the taboos. And this is so very hard to break. Yeah. Do you know what we say in English? We have a saying, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. No, I, that's right. But you see, I just want to ask, how does it feel to be 83? What are you thinking about? Your perspective of life is changed. You are thinking not like me sometimes when I'm making plans, you know, it's like plans to my, uh, to being 83, what I'm going to do. That's like 25 years forward. Yeah. But in his situation, where he's already 83, um, the, the, that's a very big difference. And it takes, um, I guess, in the position he is right now, he got through the 83 years in his life, uh, uh, being wiser and wiser. So uh, he can still enjoy the life. And that's very interesting for me because the perspective is sh much shorter, must be. He's still enjoying the life. Well, well, life. not if he, I mean, every, every one of us, uh, I hope we're not getting off subject, but every one of us, every one of us uh, ought to have the perspective that this is the last day of our life. We should have the perspective that this is our last day of our life. But you're, you're right about the, the thing. What, what normally happens with people, in, in my opinion, is that, um, you know, at one end of your life, when you're young, you have all the virility, if you like, the virility, not just the sexual virility, but the whole virility of life and your wisdom here. And then as you go through life, your virility normally goes down yeah. and crosses over, I guess, sometime in your 30s. And then gradually your virility goes down your, your, your thing. What you need to find, I think, mm -hmm. is, is to find that, that harmony, that midpoint where, where you the balance, equilibrium. Where you find the equilibrium, yeah, exactly. but also where hopefully you should strive, you should strive to increase both of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or at least maintain the virility bit while increasing the, uh, this, but keep it in harmony. Because as you say, your 83 year old father, he, he, he realizes that his body is not what it was. So he can't go out. He can't say, Oh, I think I'll go for, a, uh, I think I'll run a marathon. But his thought processes are, I can, I can intellectualize about a lot of things that my son can't because he's only 50. Mm. I mean, he remembers, he remembers, for example, you remember, he must remember the second world war. I mean, that must have an incredible, incredible deep effect on, on anyone in Russia who, who lived that. But we're getting off subject. Let's get back on the subject. Look, 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 we are talking about very interesting thing. We are talking about virility. We are talking about the, um, how to actually perform good at the old age. And that's something with the cancer to do because the process of uh, uh, retaining the energy is the same. We have to, uh, when we have cancer, we have to actually uh, turn the process into um, bigger resilience into, and we have to reverse the cancer. When we think about longevity, when we think about to prolong our active lifespan, it's the same. But you see, the methods are the same. And the guy I'm very much uh, um, uh, inspired by, he's a, he's a, he's a, he was an old uh, Kung Fu teacher. And he died at the age of 117 years. <laughs> really? Kung he, died, he died like for four, uh, five years ago. Uh, Chinese guy, right, right, right. And until his old age, he used to, you know, perform at the conferences when he uh, showed different things and physical movement to the younger guys, like uh, not just younger guys, like uh, 80, uh, 90. That was a younger guy to him, though. He was younger. And this guy, you know what he died from? Uh, a car crash? No, he died from uh, falling down from the stairs. Oh. No, I mean, in in some way, it's a nice um, it's a nice death. Well, it's, yeah. In some way, because he he he's dead not of the sickness, and that is astonishing thought. It is he amazing. Died isn't of it? sickness in the age of 117, and he preserved um, his I don't know about his virility in different you know uh, angles in this. But ask his six wives. To move, his ability to move. Well, surely he has actually he um, um, he had uh, ten wives in his uh, in his life you think that would kill most men or, or like that it's crazy because <laughs> they died they died simply and uh, many of his children you wore them out died yes you see but what interesting <laughs> is uh what the idea about this is he's been asked by um some journalist 
So, you know, what is the essence of your longevity? Why is it happened like that, that you are moving like a young man and 100, uh, you were 110 or 115 at that time? Yeah. And he said, you know, it's very, very simple. You know, starting from um, the age of 40, I just uh, did my exercises every day. Good gracious. That's amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. Okay. So you, you, you've told us the, the why. So come on. I'm sure everybody's eager to know the how. I mean, the how. What do we have to do? You know, okay, everyone, yeah, I think I'll everyone. I'll show you something. You know, uh, for, one, for, for one, some of us that just uh, came or not in the beginning, that's the first thing. That's the first thing. That's a rebounder. And then the second thing. Look at this. Now, look. Well, you should see what I, what I mean? This is... Um, it's a desk you can put up and down, yeah? What's the elevation desk? Yeah, I see that. It goes up and down. In fact, under Danish law, you have to have those in, in companies. If, every, yeah. Everyone who works, at a, they have to have this so they can stand up now and again. Yeah, but we have to change the law because we need this one too. <laughs> So, <laughs> the law. I can see the Mr. I am. Uh, I worked once oh. at the Ministry of Finance, you know, um, uh, and I'll show you what I've been sitting at. Just a second. Unbelievable. But that that desk, I just say that that desk is uh, is quite normal. It's by law. This. Is this. Everyone has to have That's that. what I've been sitting on. Okay, so if we haven't got a trampoline, uh, we should exactly. sit on the Ministry of Finance. You know, that's like. When they saw that I'm coming, what, it was not the first day of my job. It was not the first day. Uh, but it was definitely after a couple of weeks. I took this and I've been sitting on this. And you know what happened? Fifteen people came and asked me where I, why I do this. And um, actually many people um, chose uh, to buy the same kind of the ball. So you see, we need the nudging sometimes. Very much, okay. because when we understand, and I told them about the, uh, the structured movement, I told them about the uh, to relax the diaphragm, because relaxation of the diaphragm is, uh, stops hyperventilation, the levels of carbon dioxide in the blood goes up, the optimization of uh, energy, you know, acquisition Please, of uh, yeah. oxygen on the cell level goes up, the, uh, the, a lot of different things happen, the um, acidity uh, of your blood, the pH level in the blood normalizes and falls from uh, from the basic uh, to the normal, and the acidic acidic uh, state of the body becomes normal. You know, um, because these acidities they go different directions. The yeah. acidity of the yeah. blood and the acidity of the on the tissue, and people misunderstand it very very much. Yeah. Um, how the pH works. Okay. So. That's, uh, that's, that's the part of lifestyle change. And you see, I'm working at home. Um, yeah. You know, I'm working with different kinds of things. Um, and actually, um, I have a lot of different kinds of movements during the day. And you see how I start my mornings. Yeah, please do. I'm sure everyone oh, likes to see oh, this. Yes. You know what it is? is? Yeah, it's a, it's a, yeah, I know what they are. It's a, people use them for balancing, yeah? Yes, and I see I have two different shapes. Yeah. And I use it for my clients. This one, um, this one is slow. Yeah. It's flat. Yeah. This one is fast. You see, okay. it's And when I start with my clients, always. When a balance ball, thank you. About the balance and the equilibrium. That's physical. I yeah. show them. Uh, you know, the first thing, uh, how I train uh, mental balance, uh, because I do this exercise every time I play tennis, um, many, uh, several, e uh, several mornings, I start my, my work, working hour at seven o'clock. Actually, I get up at four o'clock every day and I work with writing articles first and the checking the, uh, checking my clients, yeah. the data from the day before. Yeah. And then, um, I, um, do some exercise. I walk, yeah. walk some time for a long time walk in the woods for two hours or uh, several times a day I go and start my and then at seven o'clock from seven to eight I'm on tennis court with a trainer mm -hmm. so uh, that's a, a lot of um, movement in my life and you know what I love it when I'm writing articles sometimes it doesn't work I just say to myself okay 
I go out. I take uh, this guy with me. Teddy. You see who it is? Hello, Teddy. Yeah, I see Teddy there. Teddy, and he's a, uh, and he's a very very nice dog. Very, very yeah. nice. I could say that a dog, I mean, from my own experience, yeah. and people know me from Periscope, no. a dog, a no, dog is an incredible no. uh, motivator for that's exercise. My, that's my body. That's my body because, uh, you know, I am not uh, living together with my girlfriend. We have, um, she, I live, we live different places. So we see each other only in the weekend. So this guy, he's my buddy. During yeah. The during the week. And we both make lots of structured movement. That's great, but but in the morning, I mean, in a way more structured because okay. I'm thinking what to do and how to do it. Okay. But he's able to always remain in the senses, and that's what we're talking about. You see, to be trained, the the balance is about actually remaining in the senses, in the physical body, okay. remaining the focus there. Okay, I think I think I'm stuff. okay. I think I'm on I'm on the same wavelength there because I know that you you uh, you have um, uh, which we'll probably talk about the Dharma Marga, but um, for the last uh, five or six years, every morning I start off with something called Surya Namaskar. Do you know what Surya Namaskar is? No. It's it's a, it's a sun it's a it's a series of uh, I think about eight yoga poses yeah. that you do in a do you do in a system. Mm -hmm. Uh, you start off with a, you know, the big, and then you go down, and then you yeah. do the dog pose and the horse very pose, very and, well. and and you do four rounds of that mm -hmm. uh, every morning. Uh, the first thing, and what it does to me, it is like my system comes. I can feel the whole body coming awake. I hear that it starts off. It starts the system going. And, very good idea. Yeah. Fantastic. And you see, there's a two things about uh, yoga and all kinds of exercise. You have to always, you see, you're doing it four times. Yeah. That's a bad idea. But bad you idea. Know what? You know what? Okay. You know why? Why? You, you know why? No. <laughs> because by doing it four times, you remove focus from the body. You are counting. That's a problem. Okay, well, well, I'm following. I'm following exercise because we, when we're doing all kinds of exercise, mm. we have to remain centered in the hara. That's the the best way. Okay. So our hara will tell you how many times, how many repetitions of every mm. each exercise you need this morning. Okay, well, I, I can say that the the reason I do it four times is because if you look at pranayamic breathing and things like this, okay. the 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 ancient, you know, the Indians, uh, the the people who uh, the Brahmins or whatever, they they wanted to teach people. They had to do it by ritual, so it became a ritual. So so you had to do it so many yeah, times, so many yeah. times. This way it's perfect. Yeah, perfect. but but what I found out, this is very important. <clears throat> I've discovered that Surya Namaskara, the sun worship, mm -hmm. it's not so much about. It is about emotion, but. When I learned about Buteka breathing, I realized it was all about the breathing because you breathe in and then you do emotion, you breathe out and then you breathe in. And if you start concentrating on the breathing and holding your breath in and breathing slowly out and out, then the focus, then, then you, you have a completely different mindset around this exercise. Totally, totally. I totally agree. In my opinion. Totally agree with you, but you see what you mentioned is very valuable because you have you have a focus on the breathing, and you see when you have focus, yeah. on the breathing, you do it right, and when you you do yeah. it right because you do it uh, uh, anchored in the senses in the body. That's right, but they don't yeah. explain that. Yeah, sorry. You know, this, is, this, in my opinion, this is this is something that's missing from from yoga training when you go to yoga. The the whole, in my opinion, I might be wrong, but my my whole my opinion is that the 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 central theme of yoga mm -hmm. should be the breathing. It is the breathing, and you see the pranayama. You never learn that. You never no, learn no, that. No, that's the problem. That's because we don't have time. That's the stress again. That's the modernity. How uh, modernity, modernity, right in English? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Affects our lifestyle, and that's a. Uh, you know, that's very bad because, you know, the yoga, the essence of yoga is pranayama. And pranayama yeah, is breathing. It's breathing. Yeah. And, you know, when the very old yoga, uh, before 100 years ago, before that, and still in the, in the right teachers, they are only doing pranayama from several months before going to asanas, to the physical 
to the yeah, user friend. Exactly, but you don't do that today. We don't do this today because we, we want results. And that is target oriented. We have to move back to the process, to the mastery. We have to have, you know what, um, you know what I do actually is uh, to inspire people. Um, I started, you know, after um, after being an engineer, after having career engineer career in telecommunications for 15 years, I started. I stopped and I started a music school. A music school. That's a difference. Well, I, that's a very big difference. And I wanted to work with people. I wanted to inspire people. And this uh, this musical school. It's called Music School Plus. Music School Plus. And Plus stands for a personal development through music. So you see, the music in the musical school was not the most important thing. The most important no. thing was learning something through music, and that was um, like showing the path. So being a kind of a master to my pupils, you know, um, that's the very, very slow way. Because yeah. people want results. They want to play this and that and different things. They have an idea that um, that's also about appearance because very often they want to do this because of appearance. They want to show the others. Oh, yeah, exactly. So we, slowly, I, yeah. we slowly change the focus. And that's a very three-dimensional Move Absolutely. Because we have Absolutely. to work with different things Absolutely. at the same time, you see. And then I started working with the athletes, uh, with performers, with top performers, both in business, in um, sport and um, on stage, professional musicians. Okay. So now I'm working in sports, uh, showing the path in some way, changing the way of thinking and the why. You see, okay. People, instead of doing, I'm sorry, just a last thing, instead of uh, having the, the targets in your head all the time, which okay. turns the focus and have okay. the process instead. Okay. Okay. Got it. One thing, I've, uh, we, haven't, we haven't got that long because uh, we've got to keep this to now. But, but Misha, one thing I, I'm fascinated with and I really, really like to learn more about mm -hmm is uh the one of the one of the 13 systems you mentioned is the is the uh, lymph system and how important it is for cancer patients to be able to pump the lymph as we know the lymph system doesn't have a heart or anything like that so the only way the lymph can really move is by movement and you have developed through this indian martial arts dharma marga you have developed it's your development here you develop this is you call it a three-dimensional movement um, can, can you explain that and can you show it? Can you give us a demonstration of yeah, Dharma Marga? It's a three-dimensional joint health exercise. That's it, yeah. It's the uh, multiple purpose exercise. And why it's multiple purpose? Because when we're doing the physical exercise, we have the focus. We have the focus. Focus? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Sometimes my, my English pronunciation is just uh, Russian. <laughs> <laughs> We have to focus. The wrong, the wrong place. Yeah. See, we have focus on the details. Yeah. But not on the essence. And that's what Hara training is about. So Hara, it's um, this point. Hara, this is your... Uh, this is no, easy, easy girls, this easy girls. This this, yeah. <laughs> just, uh, that's my navel. That's this yeah. one. That's Hara. It's not because uh, you have to think about it or look at it. Nothing. You have to sense this point. And then the sensing of the point and the relaxation of uh, belly muscles and the diaphragm muscles, it will bring you somewhere. And it's very hard to explain. But this place is very, very nice place to be. And that's what three-dimensional health uh, joint, multifunctional exercise or multipurpose exercise is about. You have always, always the focus there. And you do the structured movement and i'll show you the movement yeah please you do the movement with uh, 10 joints 10 physical joints and three uh, <clears throat> and three virtual joints and that's virtual how we, joints. Okay. Yeah. and how do we do this why we do it with joints yeah. because you see please all don't. the pump functions of the yeah. limbs are at the joints okay so this way that the lymph gets moved a, around doesn't have a motor 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 and yeah. um, uh, we have to move that's why the movement uh, gives life actually okay. and, and the pumping function of the lymph one of the things it stands for immunity that's okay so for a cancer immunity. patient it's very important to get the lymph moving around function. the body it's the motor of immunity 
And you know, we, when we're talking about cancer, very often we hear that never, never do um, lymph drain exercises. Yeah, because so, of the meta metastasis. Because of the metastasis. But, but you see, when we're doing what I'm doing, we change the acidity in the tissues. Okay. And, we, and cancer doesn't tissues. like acid. We, we go, the sugar goes Sorry. down, glucose goes down. I said that wrong, didn't I? I said uh, cancer does not like base. It doesn't like alkali. Cancer thrives in a, an acidic environment, that's right. correct? Well, uh, yeah, that's right. And you see, that was a question. Would more, more ketones help cancer? That's one of the things, because when the glucose goes down, yeah. ketones go up. So you can say that, uh, kingdom carriers, uh, for you especially. That's totally right. But um, um, that's the actually what I work with. That's a formula uh, called K to G, ketones to glucose or glucose to ketones uh, ratio. Ratio. Yeah. Has to, uh, ketones has to, uh, in some simple way, explain, go down, uh, down over four, cross the border of four, and the ketone has to cross the border of four upwards. So you so, meant the glucose, you said the ketone. You mean the glucose goes down, the, glucose the ketones goes down, go up. Down for, and ketones goes up, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Just, <laughs> and this is um, what we call very, very strong therapeutic zone. And we make also the very, very strong therapeutic zone by working, that was with nutrition, but we would do the same with breathing. We do the same okay. with, uh, with measuring the breathing. And okay. with the movement, when we do yeah. the structured movement, we take it further yet. We take it into immunity. When we promote in immunity, that we don't have metastasis. No, metastasis will not sit on the walls, uh, on the on the cellular wall. You know, the cells will not metastasize. The um, they won't be there. They'll be the expelled process, from the body. The, the process of uh, uh, proliferating cancer cells will simply stop because okay. it's measurable. It's measurable by the level of glucose in the blood. It's measurable by the level of ketones. It's measurable by control pause measurements every day of the breathing. And that's for sure. That's how the cancer healing works. Okay. Physiology. Remember, there's no new age in this. There's no aura um, reading, not because it doesn't work. I don't know. I simply don't know. I don't work. Yeah, but this is this is good engineering sense. That's, since that's engineering, I'm not working with new age methods. Alternative no. for me means alternative to cutting and alternative to giving pills. That's the only yeah. real alternative. Yeah, which is where the medical so industry is now. Based on the modern physiology, I'm reading uh, physiology journals every day. I'm reading the newest. Uh, Research, research yeah. and development um i'm in the network uh, i'm very happy okay I'm very happy to be in network with the very interesting people Best doctors yeah Misha, so, yeah do you do you have um i mean to cut a long story shorter here yes, oh, do, you, do you have any no no do you have any um do you have instructional um videos available on youtube or somewhere where people can follow your uh, your yes, 10 i have uh, i have instructional instructional video both and that's on sakharov.com yeah sakharov.com and on youtube just go to uh, breathing, breathing for living breathing breathe, for living breathing for living. in one word in one is in no just breathing, breathing for living to... by misha sakharov and that's a youtube channel that is called that uh, and there's a lot of inspirational things there, both about nutrition, about breathing, uh, about mental side, about, um, you know, um, uh, about everything Yeah. for the health, everything about health. But uh, what I want to say, just um, how many minutes do we have? About six. I have. But we can, we can, we can extend, we can have another one, you know, because yes, this is uh, really yes, because incredible. It's very, very big. Um, yeah, and very vital what I hear. You, yeah. You've opened my eyes again. Every time I speak to you, Misha, you come with something that absolutely blows me away. And wow. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You know, um, um, let's go to talk about this. Let's talk about, because what I wanted to talk about is actually how to make the, the uh, how to make the next time we talk about uh, the same, uh, about the movement and the cancer, we will talk about some very, very practical things. We will talk about this three-dimensional um, exercise mm -hmm. 
for joint um, uh, and uh, it's, it's it's actually not only for pumping it's called multifunctional multi-purpose because we we also work with the joint health and that's synovial fluid we actually works by pressing synovial fluid on uh, between the bones okay and that's a very unique kind of work um you see that's I want to show you. So, so you can help too. the lifestyle disease of, of uh, arthritis and... And, um... right. and because, you know, in order to move, we have to have normal joints. So uh, the joints wow. are getting normalized, the joint health. At the same time as you're moving, you normalize the joints. And that's something very, very interesting. Yeah. Because, because as I say, there's so many people in the Western world, I don't know where, in the else, where else in the world, who suffer badly from, from rheumatoid arthritis and, and joint problems. And, uh, you know, it, it's not life-threatening per se, but it's extremely painful and can really, really ruin uh, because you cannot your life's quality. Your body, actually, because you cannot move. That's right, because you're stuck. You, you're absolutely stuck. stuck. And every movement, yeah. it feels like hell. Yeah. And that offends all your body systems, all the 13 that we talked about. So wow. let me just uh, uh, say, we, we will talk about Dharma Marga and the system that I based on Dharma Marga. Uh, the system is called a three-dimensional joint health exercise, is multi-purpose exercise. We're going to talk how to uh, do the yoga. Uh, I do uh, the, um, the fountain of youth yoga. That's a... Uh, <clears throat> You know this kind of yoga, and I will uh, talk uh, um, about fountain of youth. Sorry, fountain of youth. Fountain of youth. That's what we call the uh, uh, yoga from. Um, how do we call this um, country? Huh? Alzheimer's. <laughs> I'm sure you haven't got Alzheimer's. Um, um, country, Nepal, Tibet. Tibetan yoga. Tibet, hey. We call it five Tibetans or Tibetan yoga. It's, it's the five movements. It's five things. Uh, it's called um, the five rites. And yeah. I made a, a, a kind of um, my version of it, which I do from the uh, from the other point of focus. All of these exercises, and I can I will show this. Um, wow, that's going to be great. I mean, we've got to get a lot of people on for that. And you, maybe yeah. you give a practical demonstration. Maybe you can, uh, you can do it from your studio there. I have the video studio in my home. Yes, I will, will do that. And we were going to talk about um, how to walk, actually structured walking. How to walk. How to we walk. need to know how it's to walk. How to walk in order to be able to optimize the breathing. Because it's not another way around. It's not like you, you're optimizing your walking by optimizing the breathing. No, you have to first optimize in the walking uh, to optimize your breathing, to be able to reprogram your medulla of your data, okay. your brain center. If you're walking in the right, in the wrong way, if you're looking at the environment in the wrong way, um, if your angle is wrong, if your um, if your relaxation of the of uh, of the uh, shoulders uh, is not existing, then you can no. simply not get good results. Okay. So anyway, we're coming up to the end. So. Don't forget, please tell your friends, blab them, or uh, blab them, I don't know, but um, send out on Twitter, whatever, because next time, and I'm not being funny, but Misha is going to teach us one of the most fundamental things in life, apart from breathing, and that's walking. Uh, and it's not funny. It's, it's, uh, it, if, you, if you have the right posture, if you walk correctly, it will enhance your health, your physical health, uh, incredibly. And um, as I have learned so much, I've changed my lifestyle. Um, I don't want to get ill. So um, <laughs> also, Misha does a Misha does a, a, a blog. And um, what, what's the blog address, uh, Misha? I think people should uh, subscribe to your blog because yeah. uh, you, you come out with such interesting stuff on a daily basis. And he, he does he does periscopes. Follow him on uh, Periscope Red Groove One, I think it is, isn't it? Red Groove. That's right. It's uh, at uh, Red Red Groove One. You can follow him on um, there. And on YouTube, uh, I will. Uh, you you wrote the YouTube link. Yes, I think. Yeah, if you got the YouTube, I was going to do it, but if I if I go to another tab here, I'll lose you for some reason. I'll lose. Oh, no, I have it. I have it. I have it here. I okay, have good stuff. On YouTube. YouTube channel and on YouTube channel I have um, 
lots of different um how do you call it Ch not not channels but a lot of playlists and these playlists are actually about different areas of health and if you subscribe, yeah if you subscribe and, and i'm posting it very very often so uh so everybody, everybody's watching. Thank you very much for watching. I hope it's been uh, um, of benefit. I'm sure it's been of benefit. Can you um, one call in, Steve? That's one call in, just for. Oh, we can we 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 could do that, if you want. We can call it for five minutes. Yeah. Stealth, Fatty. Yeah, yeah. If you got if if uh, her name's Anna, I think it's An Anna, isn't it? Anna. Do you want to? Do you want to join Stealth, Fatty? Please uh, join, and uh, uh, the uh, the seat is open. And she, is, I think it's Anna's first time she's used. Uh, I, I persuaded her to use Blab. Try again. Try again. No, if you if you uh, oh, hit... accidentally press the button, not a problem. Not a problem. Uh, but you're welcome. In in fact, we 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 would uh, welcome it. I mean, after doing the main uh, the main subject, I think we we're very interested in taking. Uh, you know, learning people's experiences and and what have you. So, uh, but I understand, and as you, it's your first time of using <laughs> using Blab. As you can see, it's a wonderful environment, but it does take some learning. So, anyway, we'll stop it there. But Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing time? the. I'm sorry. Please put it up on next YouTube. Time? Can sorry? we next time? Can we open the seat? Uh, Absolutely, we can. Blab, we can. Like we will do that. Minutes, we can open the seat, so you can actually join so we do us that. with the questions. I'm sorry for interrupting you, Steve. I okay, no problem. To, yeah, but we, so. we do that one uh, one uh, evening next week or one morning. It doesn't matter. Morning, evening, but but uh, I'm really looking forward to to. Okay, we we um, we will uh, put this on YouTube. Yes, we. The great thing about Blab, you can immediately up upload stuff to YouTube, so it will be on his YouTube. So so uh, a Maui, fantastic place, the hippie capital of the world. I would like to come to Maui. I would love to come to Maui as well. <laughs> come on. Let's yeah, we can do Maui. <laughs> <That's> Maui. <laughs> the hippie capital of the world. Yeah. Anyway, um, anyway, thanks very much, Misha. I've got to go. I'm going swimming now. See you, guys. Thank yeah. you for joining. Have a nice weekend, everyone. You Cheers. are fantastic. Thank you for all the good questions. Love you guys. Bye.